This is DDS. From the DDS studios, we are your hosts, Blake Melton, Bradley Newberry, and the man, Matthew Two Tone Blue Parker. Parker, here we go. We got the NFC North. Let's go, baby. Maybe one of the most shocking outcomes in all of the NFL. <laughs> Ooh. Guys, we appreciate you joining us tonight for our 2022 NFC North prediction show. While we got your attention, go ahead down below, hit the like and subscribe button there on YouTube. It's quick, it's free, it's easy, really helps us out. Hit the Rumble button on Rumble. Check us out on all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at DDS Sports Talk. And you can catch all the audio versions of these podcasts on your favorite podcasting platform. Newberry, what do we got in store tonight? Boy, we are going to start in cheesehead country, the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay earned a record of 13 and four behind coach Matt LaFleur back to back NFL MVPs for the one and only Aaron Rodgers. But Parker, what's up with these playoff games, man? They're fraudulent. (laughs) I mean, I I can, I can prove it. Sure. They won 13, but looking back at the Pythag numbers, which takes the numbers and scores and shows analytically what they should have won. They should have won 9.8 games. It was the year before that. Also, this is the largest gap. In the league. I mean, and to show you that number makes sense, it's not just some willy-nilly analytical number. Let me just say this. They lost to Jimmy G at home in the playoffs and only managed to score 10 points with the MVB quarterback and the best wide receiver in football. Blake, and that leads me to another offseason point. That wide receiver is now a Las Vegas Raider. (sighs) Yeah, ouch, right? Ouch, Aaron Rodgers is really feeling that one. Uh, you know, I guess he's going to have Lazard, Watkin, Watkins, and, and Randall Cobb now as his one, two, three there. But anytime you lose a, a wide receiver of that caliber, it's always going to sting. And I, I think this is going to be – it's not going to be good for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you you just can't lose that caliber caliber of receiver and and not – have some sort of regression, right? Yeah. So, Parker, what they did in their key ads, they did the one-year deal with Sammy Watkins, mm. Christian Watson, the rookie, mm. and there's another rookie making some noise, right? Romeo Dobbs, baby. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Hey, he he's looking to be the, maybe the number one guy there. I think Lazard is the pencil in is the number one guy, but I don't know if he's ever caught more than 45 balls in a year. And, and this has happened before, y'all, Darren Rodgers. I mean, we talk about how he doesn't have receivers, but he has had the man, the myth, the legend, Devontae Adams, for a few years. The last time that Aaron Rodgers had a receiving core this bad was the year Jordy Nelson got hurt just before the season, and that was his worst season to date. So we're looking at the same same type of deal. Will it matter that their OC, Nate Hackett's gone to Denver? Maybe not. Maybe Aaron Rodgers was kind of running that ship anyway. I like it that they have two good to great running backs with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. They combined with 1,600 yards and nine touchdowns. But can the wide receiving crew get it done? Are they mature enough to get it done? Are they going to get on Aaron Rodgers' nerves? That's what's to be seen. I think without a doubt. But I think it's not very hard to get on Aaron Rodgers' nerves. I mean, I think that's why he's going and doing ayahuasca and going on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, in the offseason. Everyone needs love. Absolutely. Getting a little tattoo thing. (laughs) You know, maybe we should go do something like that. I don't know. Yeah. If you... If you asked me to get a... If you went into a tattoo shop and you're like, I want the tattoo of Aaron Rodgers and Kyrie Irvin, like right here. That is what would come up with. That is on his arm. It doesn't make any sense. It's his whole thing with blue of water or ocean. I, I, I just don't know. And, and it's not Devont, just Devontae. MVS gone. Uh, David Bakhtiari has been hurt forever. Is he finally going to be healthy? And uh, historically, Rodgers does not throw to rookie wide receivers. And Sammy Watkins, I'm going to predict it right now. He's going to come out. He's going to have an awesome first game, just like he does every single year and he's going to disappear off the face of the earth. I'm really worried about this offense. Uh, the the best thing going is probably Aaron Jones out of the backfield catching passes. I think he might lead the, the, the team in receptions. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a little different this year for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I think, he, yeah, there's going to be a lot of running. I think there's going to be a lot of check downs, a lot of flat patterns. Uh, I don't see him really peppering the downfield area a whole lot, in my opinion. So we touch on offense. Let's go to defense. Last year, they were 13th in scoring defense at 21.8 points per game. They lost arguably their best defender. But he's staying in the division, Parker. You know who I'm talking about. Well, I was going to mention the guy that they were getting back, their best defender. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I just got some cra- – go ahead for a second. I just got some weird feedback. All right. Uh, so this year they're going to have Rashawn Gary. They're going to have Preston Smith. Each one of them had over nine sacks last year. They have one of the best cornerback trios in the league with Alexander Stokes and Douglas – I'm not as concerned about their defense. I'm kind of bullish on the Green Bay defense this year. And maybe some of that's padded with playing the Lions twice a year, the Bears twice a year. But I give a thumbs up to what you're, you're bringing at the defensive side. You're, But you're right. They did lose a major player uh, in Zadarius Smith. But, but I'm way up on this defense. I mean, I think everybody's talking about Aaron Rodgers and the wide receiver core, but Man, it, it's the defense. This is what's going to carry the team. You mentioned Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander coming back at corner. He's going to lock down half the field. This guy might be the best cor- cover corner in the league. The year before last, he only gave up two touchdowns. And you mentioned they have the trio there. They may have the best cornerback room in the entire NFL. And they have some young defensive players that they've drafted over the last couple of years that if they step forward, I mean, this – this is going to be like a top eight, nine defense, I think. So it sounds like they can they can cover the pass, Blake, but what do you yeah. have? Well, I mean, the issue that I see there is they're going to have to get better at run defense. I mean, they, they gave up the third most yards per carry last year. Now, they did some some drafting that I think is going to – they're going to rely on them to, tr- to try to improve that with Quay Walker and Devontae Wyatt. Uh, I, I, I think with having the cornerback room that they have – uh, I think they're going to be able to to really get some things done on the interior and be able to stop the run and not have to worry about dropping back into covers as much. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, th- I think this defense has got the opportunity to be something pretty good here this year, and it'll probably frustratingly get a lot of wins for Aaron Rodgers this year. The, the, the one weird nitpicky thing about their defense in their cornerback room is they have three great corners, but they have three great outside corners. So one of them's going to have to cover the slot guy, right? So who's that going to be? So you actually might something to watch this year. Maybe a, who's playing Green Bay with the slot guy, and and that guy could uh, feast this year if that outside guy can't transition because they're completely different roles. That's a good point. Well, they need a slot guy against the Bears. I, I'm just asking the question since we're talking about the North here. Uh, uh, they're so bad. I, I mean, it's I will just, get to your bears. Yeah, I don't even. I, mean, I have nothing. Yeah, no, they won't. Yeah, That's it. You're, you're spoiling it here. <laughs> My bad. I'll go. I'll go first here. Uh, Green Bay. Until proven otherwise, I think that you will win the North. I don't know if you'll be any good in the playoffs. I'm going 12 and five for the Green Bay Packers. Like I said, frustratingly, I think that uh, they will still be able to eke out some wins. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is still good. The defense is still pretty good. Uh, they'll win some close ones this year, I think. Ten and seven. Hey, there! I like that. Pulled it down a little bit. The the Aaron Rodgers we has won back to back MVPs, so we sit here and think that he's the god of the quarterbacks. But if you remember, not long ago, he was human for a few years, and he got a new quarterback coach, he got an offensive coordinator, and turned around. Those guys are gone, and not only that but they are playing a top five schedule against passing defenses this year. And as we have touched on, they don't have any receivers to beat those guys. It's going to be much harder. The only reason I am giving them 10 wins is because of their schedule. There you go. Fair enough. Wow. Me and Parker agree. (laughs) How about that? Well, I think we'll take a trip to Motor City. We're coming to see you, Detroit Lions. Detroit, you earned a record of three, 13 and one behind Coach Dan Campbell. He's trying to lay that foundation of aggressiveness, having fun with hard knocks in the offseason. 
building that new culture in what's year two here. Um, maybe. I think maybe it might still be a year too early. Parker, what do you think about their year last year and off season? You're right. People love Dan Campbell, but let's slow the train down, fellas. You mentioned it. Last year, they won three games. Congratulations, Detroit. I'll argue they should have won zero because one of those games was a last-second touchdown against the Vikings. Another one was against the Cardinals without with a, a hurt Kyler Murray. And the third was the Packers in Week 18 when they didn't play anybody. Damn. They were underdogs in every single game last year, and they haven't won a playoff game since 1991. So, yes, I like where Campbell's going. He's super fun on hard knocks. He is the new Mike Vrabel slash, you know, uh, Tomlin guy, I feel like, if he can just hang on to that job. But let's pump the brakes. Last year was in the right direction, but I think they got a long way to go. Totally agree. I mean, uh, there's <laughs> – you climb a mountain one step at a time here and and we're on like step two here in year two. So it, it's, we got a ways to go. I like the guy. They're getting some of the pieces that they need, but we still got some work to do. I've got uh, some of their key ads were wide receiver D J Chark from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then a rookie wide receiver. I mean, even if it's not this year, I think it's going to be a good one, but Jameson Williams. Uh, but looking at their offense to make those two guys work, we're looking at what makes offensive go. We're looking at Jared Goff and the quarterback. Yeah. Parker, tell us more. I love to make fun of Jared Goff, but I couldn't do it too much to this. I looked into it. He actually wasn't terrible last year. He was pretty accurate. The thing that he was terrible at, though, it's a thing that Jamison Williams is going to be good at. DJ Chark should be good at. And maybe that's why they brought him in because his pat he passed deep less than any other quarterback that saw any meaningful snaps. I'm not even just talking that start of the season, but started a few games, like less than all of them. So he's got to be more aggressive. His short game was was great, honestly, but outside of that, he was, he was just, just didn't attempt it. I want to say bad. He just didn't try. Well, I mean, I kind of refer to golf as good enough. You know, <laughs> he's just kind of good enough golf. Good enough golf. Um, but yeah, he, he's got some more tools around him in the wide receiver room. Uh, I think, uh, Jamison Williams has got a chance to be a, a big impact player for him. DJ shark. You meant, you mentioned, um, yeah, there's some, there's some potential here to do a little, I mean, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves and say, this is a 10 win team. I'm not even getting hey, ahead of myself hey, and saying, this is a, a how do you a, know? I'm a 500 not gonna, I, team. How do you know? I'm not going to say I mean, a 10 win I, team. Look at I mean, Parker Sport in the blue. That is a one tone blue that we're talking about mm. here. We are, we we don't talk about one tone. We go two tone here all the way. But anyways, I, I just golf is good enough. I think they will continue to make some pro some progression here this year, though. I like their running back Swift. I like yeah. their tight end Hawkinson. Mm, I absolutely. mean, if you if if golf can't get the ball down the field to St. Brown to Chark. He's got a good quick passing game. Both options are fine with Swift and Hawkins. Absolutely. He's, all, he's got another one, maybe already the best slot corner or slot receiver in, in the league, one of the top three that I sat here and complained about why they didn't draft him over Des Fitzpatrick for the Titans. And that's Amon Ron St. Brown. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. St. Brown. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm like. And, and, but you're right. And they've also got uh, their backup running back. I just Jamal Williams. Like the guy can catch the ball too. It might be a 60 40 split with that guy. But the 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 strength of this team, why golf might succeed, is their all offensive line. You know, most offensive lines, you get three guys that are three of the five guys that are good. If you're lucky, four of the five guys. This line, all five of them are better than average. Like maybe the best line in the league. It's always a plus to have. I always say it over and over and over. It's not the sexy position. It allows your sexy players to be sexy. You know where they weren't sexy last year, Blake? Defense. <laughs> Let's talk about They were defense. the 31st team in scoring allowed. Six of their eight draft picks were on defense, highlighted by Aiden Hutchinson, the hometown boy. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, another one of the we had we had a couple of these this in this past year's draft, right? We had uh, Kenny Pickett over at Pittsburgh, and now we have Aiden Hutchinson that Lo and behold, he's available at the number two overall pick. Detroit says, give me the hometown boy. 
question is 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 he going to be a, is he going to be a contributor this year or not? He looks good in preseason and on a hard knocks. What for whatever that's worth. But what do you you know they, if they look bad there, that'd be uh, you know that awful thing. And Bradley, I specifically knew that you wanted to talk about defense with this team. I don't so know. I've how really, you knew that. I really, really, really started looking into the numbers. And I was like, all right, they were awful. Let's see yes. what they were awful at. And I was like, all right, secondary coverage. Okay, they were like 29th. All right, in third down percentage, they were 31st. All right, and yes. let's just say this. I got to like number eight on this list. In every single one of these important metrics, they were bottom three. So I just quit. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say in every single metric on defense, bottom three, all of them. I, and I mean, he's a defensive coach, right? They should be better than that. And you mentioned it. Aiden Hutchinson coming in. Jeff Okuda's got to play better at corner. The defensive line was awful. But as y'all mentioned, they draft a lot of people. They are young, so maybe they can take a leap forward this year. And if it does help, their offense should be better, which should help the defense, right? I just still don't think, man. They just don't have the talent yet. They don't have the players. They've got a few guys there, but just it's just not enough. But that goes back to our opening statement. Maybe it's not – this is not the year. Maybe not. But Parker said pump the brakes. Maybe not. We're not saying you're doing the wrong things. It's, it just may be too early. Well, they gotta they gotta stick to the process. That's for sure. I mean, it. it they gotta build a culture. They gotta build a. <laughs> they gotta build a team here. I mean, uh, and the Detroit Lions have been bad for a very, very long time. But never fear, we'll see them on Turkey Day again. Yeah, never fear. Never. We will. And you know what? I'll start this off. This team could be <clears throat> fun to watch. This is not your Detroit Lions of old where the game's, you know, 42 to 10 or whatever. They could score. It may be 42 to 30, but they just, you know, who was it? Was it Bobby Bowden or old ball coach? Somebody said you have to go from winning. You have to go from losing big to losing little to winning little to winning big. And they just got to lose by less than they did last year. So I have them going back and forth on this, but I, I've got them going six and eleven. I, I I debated with five and twelve because those three wins last year were really fluky, but I will say six and eleven. Give into the, the HBO hype. Man, I call me crazy. I mean, they're going to be better this year. They're not going to win the North or anything. Call me crazy, but I see seven wins in their future, seven and ten. My question is, can former number three overall cornerback Jeff Okuda come back from the ruptured Achilles? It's a big, big comeback there. It's a big deal for that overall defense that was the second worst. Um, I like Aiden Hutchinson. I like a lot of the players. They're just very, very young, man. Um, I don't even hate golf. I think their offensive line allows golf to do some things here. I'm going 7-10. and 10. It's just not enough for this season. You know, one thing I failed to mention was probably their biggest acquisition last year was by subtraction. In the middle of the season, they were so bad offensively. If I remember, they fired Anthony Lynn, an offensive coordinator, Bye. who is traditionally awful. The Chargers did it the year before. This guy is like, you know, crazy when he's running the game. So this year, their offensive coordinator, who took over as a uh, uh, passing game coordinator last year, is going to get uh, Ben Johnson is going to get a shot at it. So just by that addition from subtraction. And since you love talking about awful so much, we're going to Chicago. And And the Chicago Bears. Here we go. The Chicago Bears finished last year at 6-11. and They have a new coach. Matt Eberflus comes in. Ownership literally had to blow the whole thing up, man. That's, that's 10 years. That's a decade of losing football, bad coaching, bad players, bad play on the field. It's, it's just blow it up time, Parker, in Chicago. Monsters of the Midway. <laughs> that, that's come from a long way, right? Like, if you if, kind of like we were talking about Detroit and their numbers on defense, if you look at Chicago and their numbers, they're in the bottom three also, but on both sides of the ball. Uh, they're just they're just absolutely terrible. I don't know what to say. And you're right, they blew it up. They needed to. They brought in new coaching staff, Matt Everflus, defensive coordinator, and then they brought in defensive coordinator from the, the defensive coordinator from the coach. They also brought in the offensive coordinator from the Packers, who we talked about. And if y'all remembered, much like I mentioned for the Packers when Aaron Rodgers wasn't was pedestrian until this guy came in. So maybe Luke Getze can turn some stuff around in Chicago. Do you think anything good of what you saw last year? I mean, maybe you saw some hope in their quarterback. I mean, did you see anything last year that said, okay, there's a, there's a building block? 
when you're playing for a team that's this bad, it's very difficult to discern whether or not the quarterback is even close to being any good. You have no idea. I mean, that's my argument, honestly, for Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. I mean, he played for such a bad team last year that I have no idea if he's a good NFL quarterback. I have my opinion as to what I think he is. I think he's a better quarterback than what, you know, was put out there. Justin Fields, I just really don't know, man. It it was it was like watching a, a high school team going out there playing with a bunch of, of professionals. So it's very difficult to make a, an interpretation as to his talent. But uh, it was either that or Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton's not the answer in Chicago. We'll start on offense, Parker. Last year they earned the 27th best in scoring offense with only 18 points per game. They have an OOC coming in here. They brought in offensive lineman Riley Reef. They brought in Michael Schofield. Both of them have over 100 games of NFL experience. That should help, but is it enough for, for Fields, man? He only completed 58% of the passes, seven TDs to 10 interceptions. Not going to get it done in the NFL. I'll give you the one pretty good, the one decent thing I have to say about the Bears and about Fields is last year during his last few starts, he was a top 10 quarterback. So that's saying something, I guess. I, I, I don't know. But it feels like, y'all, we're going to have this conversation in two years. Where we're going to say, what if? What if Fields would have gone to a competent team? What if New England or the Patriots or, or the Patriots or the, or the Steelers or whoever, just about anybody, drafted him other than this, bear, this particular Bears team? But you're right. I don't think it's enough. Because even if they can protect him, which I don't think they can, who's he throwing it to? Who is he throwing it to? Valus. They throwing it to Valus. You know, forty-seven year old Valus. Look, I'm a, we're Tennessee guys here. I like Valus, but I don't know that that was the best decision. What do you think, Parker? They walked into this draft and they were like, you know what? <sighs> How do we help out our number one quarterback here in Justin Fields? We'll I got it. Defense. Let's draft a defensive player because he's the best one on the board. We'll get and then let's draft a defense player again and let's draft a twenty-five year old rookie. You know, there are wide receivers right now. I challenge just about anybody to tell me who it is outside of Mooney because it's Pringle, it's Tajay Sharp, and it's my boy Almond's brother, Equinemius St. Brown. Like, they have nobody at wide receiver. They, they did not help him out at all. It makes me think this isn't the regime that drafted him. This isn't the regime that wanted him. It feels like they've already washed their hands of him to me. I, I, that's a very interesting point. You know, are they just going to let him die on the vine there? Uh, that's a very fair point. And <laughs> – was it Justin Fields that I heard that, that has the quote out there saying that he's throwing to guys that wouldn't have been fifth string at Ohio State? Yeah. So oh. to, to, to show you how much that they didn't get anyone to help Justin Fields. So they have some of the cheapest groups around him. They have one of the cheapest running back rooms. They have one of the cheapest offensive lines. And they have one of the cheapest wide receivers room. They've got the trio of not helping out their quarterback. Everybody on that offense is cheap. They let Allen Robinson go to the Rams. Yep. They traded away Khalil Mack. He's going he's gonna to be with the Chargers. Mooney had over 1,000 yards, but somebody had to catch him. They've got a tight end and Cole Komet, maybe with a quick passing game. I just I don't see much in the way of hurrah about your offense that gave up 58 sacks last year. I know you brought in some old dudes to try yeah. to block up on the line, but it's just I not don't enough. See much here. No, it's not enough. I mean, it, it's just a porous offensive line, and like you said, as you describe it, that was a very good description. They brought in some old dudes to help try to make things better. I, I don't know how that really equates. Uh, I don't really see this team being anything more than what they were last year, quite frankly. I want to touch on defense. Before we go, they were 22nd last year, allowing 24 points per game. We already talked about they traded away Khalil Mack. They're switching to a 4-3 defense. Roquan, he's back, right? We're, taping, we're, we're doing this after all that fiasco. Mm. What do you got on their defensive side? I, I mean, the defense, they might have the worst defensive line in all football. And like you say, they have Roquan Smith, sure. But who cares about an off-the-ball linebacker? They don't really do anything. I, I just, like, get rid of him. Trade him. I don't care. Uh, the secondary is probably the strength here. Jalen Johnson may be their best guy if he could take a step forward. But there's not a lot of bright spots, fellas. There really isn't. 
The one I identified was another linebacker they brought in from the Vegas Raiders, uh, Nick Morrow. He's going to be pretty good, man. I think they'll be able to tackle from the linebacking position. Um, They brought in a defensive lineman from the Colts that kind of follows uh, Matt Eberflus over. But switching defensive schemes, sometimes it takes a minute to get used to it. I, I really am leaning towards something you hinted at, or maybe it was both of you. Like, are they doing this on purpose? My answer is yes, and let's hear this stat right oh, here. Oh, boy, here we go. Next oh, year. The Chicago, oh, you're gonna... You want it? No, you got it, baby. I Next love it. year, the Chicago Bears will have over $120 million in cap space available. So I may argue maybe they are doing this on purpose this year, Parker. Not only do they have a ridiculous amount of cap space, it's it's the other team is like – Half that. I mean, they're not even, no one's even close. So they could load up. There is, there are so many scenarios to this team. If the GM does it right, like you could surround, it's almost a Cincinnati uh, Bengals formula, right? Like I've got all this money. Let's find the weakness. Let's plug, let's bring all these offensive linemen in. And if, if, if uh, Justin Fields goes out there and he's good, great. We don't even have to spend this top draft pick on one of these quarterbacks. If he sucks, great. They'll bring a guy in. It's really what it feels like to me. Like, hey, sink or swim, kid. If you're great, awesome. We can trade back. It does feel on purpose. Just the amount of sheer money. That was my absolute massive point on that. The the, the salary cap implications on this is – and they have more room they can free up. It's They can still cut some veterans that aren't that great. They can make this number bigger than it already is. They, they're tanking, right? Hey, I, I, mean, I, did, I didn't say it, but I said well, it. I, I, we see it's real talk here. We see the pictures, man. We've got a new coach call a spade a spade here. Almost an entire revamped front office. Out with the old, in with what they want. I mean, you might, Chicago fans, you may have to just take it, take it on the chin this year. But I mean, this is like what they do in college. Whenever they get a new college football coach, it's like I don't really care about all those guys. Those guys got the other guy fired. Is that what we're seeing? It's what it sounds like. So with that in mind, how bad are they going to be, Blake? They're going to be abysmal. It's going to be a miracle if they win three games, but I'm going to give them three games, three wins, three and 14. Ouch. Hey, I was there with you, and then I started looking at the schedule, and I think Fields, just with his pure his legs, can win a couple of games. Because if you look at their schedule, they play against – the Texans. They, I mean, they play in their divisional games should be tough, even if you're bad. Texans, Giants, Commanders, uh, Falcons, of course, the Lions, Jets, uh, Lions, and then maybe a couple of games at the end of the year that don't matter, just purely based on schedule. And the, that field is going to run for his life. I'm giving him five, five and 12. I actually found a sixth. I'm going six and 11, but you're last place in, in the NFC North. I think y'all are crazy. Three wins all the way. And last but not least, Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings earned a record of eight and nine. They have a brand new coach, Kevin O'Connell. He comes in after winning a Super Bowl, helping win a Super Bowl with the with the LA Rams. Man, Young coach looking for that little extra something, something to take this, I'd argue, a pretty talented squad to the next level, Parker. Yeah, there's a reason why they came in and didn't clear house. You know, uh, they they pretty much kept the roster like it was because this roster is ready to win now. And I sat here and ranted about it last year, and I'm going to do it again. Their quarterback, Captain Kirk Cousins, has thrown for more than 8,500 yards and responsible for 70 touchdowns in the last two years with a muted Mike Zimmer offense, and now he's getting an actual play caller? Sign me up. Totally agree. I, I, I'm i very bullish on this team this year. I think they got, I think got a lot of pieces in place. Like you said, they're ready to win now. They're one of those teams that's ready to take that next step. It's going to be interesting to see if they can uh, step up and do it. Yeah, offense. They were 14th, led by Kirk Cousins, 66% passing, 33 touchdowns to only seven picks. He earned Pro Bowl. Dalvin Cook, love the guy. 
over 1,100 yards. My fantasy keeper, wide receiver, <laughs> Justin Jefferson, 100 receptions, 1,616 yards, 10 TDs, still room to grow, do offense to flourish in. And Parker, they still have old man Thielen. They still have K.J. Osborne. And they even said, hey, you remember that guy we drafted? That tight end, Irv Smith Jr., well, he might do something this year. Adam Thielen has 24 touchdowns over the last two years. Like People keep saying he's going to fall off the cliff, and he is, but they said that two years ago, and then he had <laughs> 24 he touchdowns. Yeah. And Justin Jefferson is the best young receiver in the league. They have come out. Sometimes coaches lie to us, but sometimes they tell us the truth. And they have multiple times come out and said, he is going to be in the Cooper Cup role in this offense. He is going to be in the Cooper Cup role in this offense. And you know what? I believe him because that guy is freaking good. And you mentioned the new coach. I just want to give you a little stat here of how much I think that matters because I am high on this new coach. Because, I mean, if you look over the last last year, the Vikings finished 8-9, and nine, as you mentioned, and five of those losses were a combined 13 points. If you take out what happens in the two-minute portion of games, they would have been 15-2. and two. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> they had 14 <clears throat> games decided by one score, and they lost eight of them. That's an NFL record. They had the eighth most penalties. They had the fourth most penalty yards. I say all this to say they were poorly coached, poorly disciplined, that's why they brought in the new coach, right? That's why he didn't change up stuff. The issue was the coaching, not the players. The pieces are there. I mean, there's no denying it. You know, you start to see a bunch of penalties, like you said. Uh, it's an indication of, of coaching being a problem. And you, when you've got a quarterback that's putting up numbers uh, the way Kirk Cousins is – in the offense that he was in, it's like, dude, what could be, what could we do if we had an offense where he was a little bit more free to do what he needs to do? And, and with Dalvin Cook behind him, it, it, I can't even say it enough. They're ready to win right now. Is this the year, though? That's going to be the question. Can they get better on defense? Oh, and you ask a question yes, about defense. I, I know. I, I, I just wanted to look over at you and see those eyebrows raised when I said that. Well, let's talk about defense because last year they were horrible. They were 24th, <laughs> allowing over 400 points. Blake and I guess a Parker allowed over 400 points, the only team to do it. In back-to-back -back seasons, by God, this is the only time ever in 62 years of Vikings football that they've allowed over 400 points in back-to-back -back seasons. They're switching it up to a 3-4 defense. You know, Daniel Hunter returns. They we already talked about they signed Zadarius Smith. They got a big nasty Parker. They got a big nasty from the Bills and old Harrison Phillips. They, They're trying they, to address it. Yeah, they they are. They also drafted Lewis Seen, Andrew Booth. Um, and dare I say, they were bad defense. They also had a lot of injuries last year. They've got their best pass rushers coming back. And dare I say, their coach Mike Zimmer, who is a defensive mastermind. Might have been preoccupied last year. Just Google it if you want to know what I'm talking about. Jeez, I should have had that ready. I should have had that ready, man. <laughs> and, and and so I'm just not sure last year's numbers with the injuries and all these guys that they've brought in, Zadarius, Zadarius Smith, as we you've mentioned. I don't think there's sometimes I really lean on numbers, and there's sometimes I don't think they quite paint the right picture. And I think this is one of those scenarios. I agree. I mean, they tried to address a lot of their defensive issues in the uh, in, in the aft. Wow, in the draft and in the off season with acquisitions. I mean, I I think they're doing the right things here. They're moving in the right direction. I'm bullish on them. I'm bullish, Newberry. I mean, I'm thinking for Lewis, who better to lean on than than your your veteran and Harrison Smith? I'd love to have him playing safety for my team over the last few years. <laughs> So do you think they have enough to take over this division or are they fighting for a wild card spot? Well, funny you might ask. I think they're definitely going to be pushing Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers this year. And I do believe this is the year that they overtake them. They will go 10 and seven and hold the tiebreaker over the Green Bay Packers. Whoa, champions. You know, I'm going to sell you guys on this team because – they're loaded. I mean, legit. Dalvin Cook, man, start catching passes. And who are they scared of? The Lions? 
The Bears? The wide receiverless Packers? No. So who else in the NFC could they be scared of? The Bucks. Well, they have no offensive line there, right? And Brady doesn't want to be there. That's obvious. He retired in the midseason and then took 11 days off because he had stuff to do. I'm 45 years old. Right. So, oh, so it's got to be the Super Bowl champions who I love, the Rams. Man, there's something going on there with Stafford's arm uh, that's really under wraps there. He had all summer to get healthy, and he still isn't. I'm telling you, something really, really weird is going on there. And right now, the Vikings are underdogs in only five games out of all 17. So Vegas knows something. And not only will the Vikings win the NFC North, they will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. They are going to be 12 and 5. And one of those losses will be to the Bears in the last week when they sit all their starters because it doesn't matter. Oh, man. I'm telling you, for anyone that is that's a, not crazy, though. For anyone that's a Vikings fan, this gentleman right here nailed it with the Rams saying they would represent the mm-hmm. NFC in the Super Bowl. They would win the Super Bowl, is what he said. Yep. yep. Go back and listen to our shows from last year. And Parker called the Rams from last year. You're going to have to stay tuned for a little postseason show to see if he actually picks them to win the Super Bowl. We'll see. We'll see. Boy, all this good news, all this good news. I'm going to have to see some more from your defense before I'm as bullish. I'm saying you're a playoff team at nine and eight. I got Green Bay winning the division. Okay. Okay. Wow. That was our tour around the nfc north it absolutely was guys really appreciate you joining us tonight on our 2022 nfc north prediction show while we got you here go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button on your way out it really helps us out it's quick it's free it's easy go ahead and hit the rumble button on rumble check us out on all of our social media facebook instagram tiktok and twitter at dds sports talk and catch the audio versions of all these podcasts on your favorite podcasting platform. Gentlemen, final thoughts. I, I just am sitting here on the Vikings high, baby. I mean, just I'm sitting here with Kirk Cousins. He's going to get it done. You're sitting there and you said his n- numbers earlier, Bradley. You know whose numbers those are close to? MVP. MVP of last year. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the Vikings chant is, but I'll learn it before the next podcast. And Skull, Skull. Vikings, Skull. Let's yes, yes. Let's that. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah, we need yes, to I'll do that now. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get that on the on the little effect. Oh thing. man, Yoda. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna defer to Yoda and his words of wisdom for my final thoughts. Bears, your field turf sucks. It will. Yeah, these come guys. on, fix your field, Chicago. Damn. Yeah, my final thoughts are you guys are absolutely crazy. The Bears are not going to win more than three games. Two-tone blue all the way. You guys be well.